Hi, I'm Kyle with DIY Auto Homeschool, and this is our first video in our Electrical and Electronic Systems training series. Now this series is going to take us through everything from your basic electrical system tests all the way up through starting system testing, charging system testing, and more advanced tests like parasitic load tests and other things that involve the electronic systems on a vehicle. But before we can get to those tests, we need to build a good understanding of what electricity is. So we're going to start at the very, very basics of electricity. And to do that, we're talking about atoms. So what is electricity? Electricity is when an electron from one atom jumps to another atom. The energy that's released when that electron leaves an atom and moves to another one is electrical energy. Now that's going to be very key to remember when we start talking about some of the points that we'll get to at the end of the video. But remember that when that electron leaves one uh, atom and moves to another one, the energy release is electrical energy. Now, for our example, we're going to use a copper atom for two reasons. One, because most automotive wiring is made out of copper. And two, because very conveniently so, it has one electron in its outermost shell and it makes it very easy to show uh, demonstrations using copper because you just got one electron floating out there and you can throw it off onto another atom. I mean, we act like it's nothing, but it's actually something. So. Atoms, as you may or may not remember from school, are made up of three things. We have protons, neutrons, and electrons. Now the nucleus of the atom, where the majority of the mass of that atom is, is made up of protons and neutrons. Now for copper, we have uh, an equal number of protons and electrons, which is the case for most elements, but uh, that's because it's its lowest energy state. Protons are positively charged and electrons are negatively charged. And so when you have 29, in this case, 29 protons, 29 electrons, the, that's its lowest energy state. It's not excessively positively charged. It's not excessively, excessively negatively charged. So what we have, like I said, in the nucleus is your protons and neutrons. And outside of that are different shells uh, or orbits of electrons. Now in your first one you have 2 and then 8 and then 18 and then 1. I think that math comes up right. Yes, that's 29. So now the way this has typically been represented is you've got your nucleus and then you've got the electrons just running around it in an orbit in lines kind of like this and <clears throat> we tend to think of it just like we think of planets orbiting the Sun. However, it's become more common knowledge that that's not an accurate representation of how the electrons move in the electron cloud around the nucleus. But we're not going to dive too too far deep or too deep into you know the structure of the atom because that's not our focus. Our focus is just to understand what they're made of so we can look at what happens when electricity flows. So that's the basic of what you need to understand is how the uh, atom is made up. So what we do with that to create electricity is when we have a excessively positive source here and an excessively negative source here and we'll discuss the systems that create that positive and negative forces uh, later but now we're just going to say this has an excessive positive force so this electron in the outermost shell is going to be attracted to the more positive charge because just like with magnets, negative attracts to positive, positive attracts to negative, uh, and like charges would repel each other. So this electron will be pulled out of the outer shell of the atom and towards the more positive charge. That will make this, uh, this atom now it will be more positively charged than the next atom in line. And so the electron from the outer shell of this atom is going to jump to this atom because now this one is more positively charged than this one. And that electron is going to say, hey, I want to be over there. You know, I'm attracted to positive charge. And then the same thing happens here, the same thing happens here, and the same thing happens here. Now, remember how I said that 
when that electron leaves the atom and moves to the next one, that's that energy release when that happens, that's electrical energy. So as you can see, this all happens very, very quickly, almost instantaneously. So we say that electricity travels at the speed of light or nearly the speed of light. I think they say in a copper wire it travels at like 96% the speed of light, which puts it at like 178 or 179,000 miles per second. Still pretty quick, not too shabby. But the misconception, and for those of you that are following us on Facebook, the question I put out yesterday was, could you beat an electron in a foot race through a 50-foot uh, wire in a live circuit? And the answer is yes, and quite easily, because the electrical charge or the electrical uh, energy that's released as these move is there almost instantaneously because this happens throughout the entire circuit. But there are billions and billions and trillions of atoms in a, uh, a wire, uh, especially one 50 feet long, so it's going to take a lot of time for the electron at this end to jump to one atom, jump to the next, jump to the next, jump to the next, jump to the next, and get through 50 feet of wire. I mean, a long time. Now, when we talk about electricity traveling at the speed of light, we think, well, that electron is over there just like that, but that's not the case. It moves at something called drift velocity. And what you're not going to see is me trying to calculate drift velocity of like a 14 gauge wire and a 10 amp circuit. It's just, I'm not gonna do it because that, that is math and that stuff way above my head and there's no need to dive off that deep. Just understand that the electrical energy is released when an electron jumps from one atom to the next. And that happens, like I said, nearly instantly. That's why it works at the speed of light or nearly the speed of light. But it will take time for these electrons to migrate through the system and get all the way to the other end. So a quick recap, electricity is the movement of an electron from one atom to the next atom. And what happens in electrical circuit is, since we have a constantly uh, higher positive charge source here and a negative charge source here, we have atom, or sorry, electrons that are constantly jumping through this path from negative to positive. Now, in one of my videos, my video on relative compression testing, I mentioned that the amp clamp I used followed conventional theory flow. Conventional theory flow says that electricity flows from positive to negative, and that's the way a lot of people in the automotive industry look at it, and that's just because that's what we were taught you know, a long time ago, and this shows you how that's not actually correct. The more correct method to look at would be the electron flow, following the electron. So that's what I meant in that video when I said that, you know, we could argue whether that, you know, conventional theory flow or conventional flow theory was right or not, but this, this gives a little more light onto what I was talking about there. So now you know what electricity is, next we're going to have to talk about how we're going to observe it, measure it, and how those units of measurements are going to piece together as we look at a, an electrical system functioning. Thank you for tuning in for this video. Stay tuned for the next one. We'll continue this series and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.